Shalom, brother and sister in Christ. Welcome to our online service for the third Sunday of Advent. Let us pray with the colleague of the day. O Lord Jesus Christ, who at your first coming sent your messenger to prepare your way before you, grant that the ministers and stewards of your mysteries may likewise so prepare and make ready your way by turning the hearts of the disobedient to the wisdom of the just that at your second coming to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in your sight, for you are alive and reigns with the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us together sing a song to praise our Lord. Let us have a few minutes reflection before we pray the confession together. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our fellow men, in thought and word and deed, in the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault, we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen.
Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Bible reading for today is taken from the New Testament, Luke chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. Luke chapter 3, verses 7 to 18. Verse 7. Then he said to the multitudes that came out to be baptized by him, Brood of vipers, who want you to flee from the wrath to come? Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourself, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. And even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has, he who has two tunics, let him give to him who has none, and he who has food, let him do likewise. The tax collectors also came to be baptized, and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what is appointed for you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, And what shall we do? So he said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely, and be content with your wages. Now as the people were in expectations, and all reasoned in their hearts about John, whether he was the Christ or not, John answered, saying to all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I is coming, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to lose. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The winnowing fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his thresh, threshing floor, and gather the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And with, with many other exhortations, he preached to the people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to the Lord. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord for giving us life and being, and for being able to meet uh, using technology. Today is the third Sunday of Advent, and we are thinking about the coming of the Lord Jesus. We know that Christmas is round the corner. However, we are also thinking about the second coming of the Lord Jesus. Today we want to think about the message of this man, John the Baptizer, when he uh, introduced Jesus uh, from the wilderness uh, in Israel. As we begin, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for the gift and promise of eternal life through your Son, Jesus Christ. And today, as we meditate and think about your servant, John the Baptizer, as he uh, comes before the Lord Jesus' public ministry about 2,000 years ago, may you speak to us. Because you are the same God. As you, are, as you were, you are, and you are to come. We commend this time to you in Jesus' gracious name. Amen. So the text for today, or the title uh, I'd like to give to today's sharing is John the Baptizer and Christ's Second Coming. The text is Luke chapter 3 verses 7 to 18 that was read to us, so we will read that again. We may come back and refer to it. Uh, when we need to. So to start to start off, uh, this is the question: Is John the Baptizer relevant today? 
In other words, what John the baptizer did as he introduced the Lord Jesus Christ uh, in the wilderness near Jordan and also by the baptizing of the Lord Jesus Christ in the river Jordan, uh, John the baptizer introduced Jesus. And so as we think about uh, Christmas, you know, the coming of Christ as a baby, and also think about Jesus that he's going to come as the king. So is John the baptizer and his message re relevant today? So uh, let's take a look at it. First of all, from verses 7 to 9, I think we have heard many, many times, if you remember John the baptizer, I like to call him the baptizer rather than Baptist, because uh, Baptist associate this John with a, with a denomination, and I don't think, uh, I don't, uh, we, we shouldn't, you know, make the association, because he, John the baptizer wasn't associated with any uh, denomination. Yeah, not that I have anything against any denomination. But when we think about John the Baptizer, do remember he preached a baptism of repentance. That means those who are to be baptized by him to receive forgiveness of sins, they must repent. So the question is, is this message of John the Baptizer relevant to us today who are waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ's second coming? What do you think? And as we look at verses 7 to 9, uh, it tells us this, that judgment is ready. Yeah, judgment is ready. Uh, he said, you know, uh, he really uh, called out yeah, the, those who come to him. He called them brood of wipers. You know, he, he was not afraid to offend the people because he was speaking the truth. Very often, those who speak soft words to us, who manja manja us, in reality spoil our life because they never point out you know the fault now i'm not saying that we should go and shout at everybody no the bible says speaking the truth in love but sometimes or sometimes as in the case of john the baptizer here when those people come representing god's righteousness and judgment he really scolded them and then uh, he said you know god is uh, he said verse 9 he said the ex even now, the axe is laid to the root of the trees, you know. Why to the root of the trees? Those trees that do not bear good fruit, it will be chopped down. In other words, John the baptizer is saying, is saying that judgment is ready. God is ready to judge. Does this apply to us today? And then he reminded, or he warned the people, uh, telling them that, uh, hey, you guys, I know that you are descendants of... Uh, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, you know, you are the Jews, but don't depend on that. Don't depend on that, that you have Abraham as your forefather and that God will not judge you. Now, if we are aware or we uh, know the Old Testament, we realize that it is true. In fact, God has judged the nation of Israel very, very much. In spite of the fact there were descendants of Abraham whom God called uh, his friend, you know, uh, Abraham, yeah. And so John the baptizer here reminds the, the, those uh, Jews that come to him for baptism as they, uh, you know, they need to, bat to, be, to repent, yeah, to turn from their sin. He said, you know, don't think about how your ancestors uh, can bless you, you know, because you belong to this Abraham, then God is not going to touch you. John is really telling you, telling the people, hey, you are responsible for your sin. That is what John is saying. Yeah. So uh, what about today? Do you think God will look at our ancestors and say, okay, because you are whose children, then I will not judge you? In fact, if we claim to be from Christian families, all the more we should be careful because we bear the name of Christ, we bear the name of God. You know, and uh, it's something we need to be uh, really careful. Yeah? So repentance in life really is still relevant today. Yeah? Repent and believe the gospel, Jesus said. 
Yeah, so Jesus did not uh, nullify or delete uh, John's message when he came later. But Jesus said, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. Yeah. So Jesus brought not only the message of repentance, but also God's kingdom. You know, another level. But at this point, when John was uh, preaching, he was giving the message, you know, repentance in life, it is relevant for us today. Alright? So the next thing we want to look at, which is, uh, I really like this part, is examples of repentance. Yeah, what is repentance? Often we, we think that the Bible, you know, has all these words. But actually the Bible is very practical. Yeah, it, it, it notes for us when those people, in fact three categories of people, came to John the Baptizer, he very clearly told them what it means to repent. Now I put it in other words, yeah, in other words, and see if you uh, recognize them. The first one is to love neighbors practically. Yeah, this is for everybody, this is the general crowd, yeah, the general crowd who came to him and basically he said if you have two, you know, you have two pieces of clothing, give one to the, the person who doesn't have. Yeah, if you have uh, more than enough to eat, you know, give to your neighbor who has nothing to eat. So, repentance, it really means uh, loving your neighbors practically. In other words, if we don't love our neighbors, or we just love using our lips, but not doing anything, just like James say, you know, you see a brother uh, hungry, and you just say, go and, uh, you know, be fat, but you don't feed him, then it is really sin. So, John the baptizer is the same message, basically. You know why? Because it comes from the same God. So an example of repentance is to love neighbors practically. If we don't do that, we are living in sin. And then next one is not controlled by money. This is uh, pointed to the tax collectors. The tax collectors are those who deal with money on behalf of the Roman Empire. And uh, it is reported uh, they collect more than is necessary. Yeah? Probably they are supposed to collect a little bit more as they are you know, as their salary, as their payment, but they went excessive. For example, if, if the Roman government, for example, me, uh, okay, if they collect uh, 1%, yeah, 1% extra as your payment, or from that payment, from the tax, you take 1%, but they will collect much more, so much so that probably maybe 20 or 50% go to their own pocket. And why do they do that? It is because, like most people, they appreciate the value of money. Yeah. So to repent is not to be controlled by money. Don't do things for the sake of money. Don't let money be your God. That is what uh, John the Baptizer is saying. Do you think it's relevant for those who are waiting for the coming of, Lord, of the Lord Jesus? Can we be controlled by money and then we say that we are waiting for Jesus coming? Yeah. And then the third one, uh, it is to soldiers, yeah, to soldiers. And they said the uh, soldiers has to deal with authority. Yeah? In other words, they represent the Roman government and you know they have uh, weapons and they are the government, you know, they represent the government. And so John said, do not threaten people. How do they threaten? Yeah, of course probably you know with the weapon or with the authority. And they can frame up people, yeah? they can frame people for things they didn't do. Because if they report, you know, the authorities, Roman authorities will believe their own people, that kind of thing. So basically, repentance means no abuse of authority. And probably we will think that, okay, I'm not in the government, you know, uh, and so on. Some may be, but authority is not just with government. Authority can be in the family. You know, it is your influence. Yeah, of course, uh, Parental authority can be abused, uh, and so many other things. And it can be indirectly, it can be the other way around, you know. Uh, it is like, uh, uh, for example, parents, manja, you know, they so love uh, a child, you know, and then the child knew that he can sway the parents to do what he or she wants. And basically that is, you know, is an abuse of influence which 
carries authority with those who who uh, who is influenced by this person. And I think this applies to a lot, a lot of relationships, yeah? abuse of authority, it's abuse of influence, to put it another way. So repentance means do not abuse this influence, do not abuse this authority. And uh, John, the baptizer, he told the soldiers, live with contentment, you know, but don't use your influence to make yourself rich, to make yourself comfortable, and all kinds of things. And uh, the temptation is great, brothers and sisters. You know, even 2,000 years ago, John has to tell the soldiers to do this, if they are truly repentant. So even today, uh, even today, yeah, so you find uh, these are examples of repentance that has to do with daily life, with, you know, loving your neighbor, not controlled by money, you know, the, we know the importance of money, and then the, of influence uh, or authority, and then to live with contentment. So is this relevant to us? And then verses 15 to 16 leads to another level that uh, repentance has to do with stop doing the wrong things. Yeah. So uh, God is not just interested in us to stop doing the wrong things, but then do the right thing. Yeah, do the right thing. So what is the right thing? So very briefly, of course, we note that uh, at this point in the Gospel of Luke, uh, it did not say about much about Jesus' teaching. It will come up, uh, later on. But at this point, uh, John the Baptizer highlighted this. Yeah, it is, uh, let us look at it. The first one is knowing Jesus. Knowing Jesus. Why knowing Jesus? Because if you look at John the Baptizer, he, real, he knows who he is. He knows that he is not the star, you know, so to say. He is not the star of the show. He is not the, he is not the person that people should pay attention to. Yeah, it is Jesus. And then he knows who Jesus is. Because he said, I'm not worthy to untie, you know, the shoelace of his sandals. To untie somebody's uh, shoelace or shoelaces is really the work of a servant. Of course, for little children, parents will do that for them, yeah. But uh, what John the baptizer mean, meant here is that, you know, Jesus is of such honorable, so honorable that he even to touch the lowest, you know, the shoelace is not worthy. So, John knows Jesus, who Jesus really was. And of course, we want to know who Jesus is. You can look at the book of Revelation and realize that although Jesus suffered and died while he was on earth, he rose on the dead and he, will, he was given a throne. And the days are coming. In fact, waiting for Jesus coming is really to, to look forward to Jesus reigning as a king. So right here, you know, John the baptizer uh, really tells us knowing Jesus by his, by his proclamation of his own unworthiness. And then... Uh, he said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Spirit and with fire. In other words, those who repent, those who believe and follow Jesus will be filled with the Spirit. That is Jesus' way. Yeah, that is Jesus' way. Uh, in other words, those who believe in Jesus will be filled with the Spirit of God. Uh, not too long ago, uh, we did a series about the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And we note that in the Old Testament, only the prophet, the priest, and the king are anointed, and the anointing oil, which uh, symbolizes the presence of the Holy Spirit in the priest, in his priestly work, in the prophet, yeah, in his prophetic work, work, and also for the king as he leads the people of Israel. But then, John the baptizer says, you will be filled with the Spirit. That means this People who follow Jesus Christ have the great privilege and honor to be filled with the Holy Spirit, to live life as under or influence or be full of the Spirit of God. And this is something marvelous, brothers and sisters. Do not just think of the Christian life as, oh, you follow these rules, you go to church, you know, like so mundane. No, it is being filled with the Spirit of God. 
It is being a child of God living in this earth. It is showing God's character. It is doing deeds that God would do, that Jesus himself would do when, for, when Jesus is on earth. So is this relevant for us today? As we wait for the Lord Jesus? And then, uh, baptized with what you call uh, the Spirit and fire. Fire, generally speaking, can be said to be a cleansing agent. For example, if you want pure gold, the purer the gold, you know, the longer the gold met metal from the ground needs to be, uh, be burned, uh, be, be, be cleansed by the fire. Yeah? So by fire, it also meant cleansing. In other words, to follow Jesus' way, it, meant, it is meant to you know, do away with the evil and allow God to purify our lives. That is Jesus' way. It is not following the world in the way of comfort, looking for blessings as the world, would, what the world would call blessing. Yeah, money, enjoyment, all this as blessing. Yeah, but it is, a, it is a cleansing by fire. It is a living the way that Jesus wants us to live. Yeah, when the devil uh, tempted Jesus with the riches of the world and all this, Jesus did not fall for it. Yeah. So all these temptations for the Christian, for the follower of Jesus Christ, you know, the spirit within will cleanse us. Sometimes, you know, overcoming these temptations yeah, in all areas of life. So Jesus' way is a cleansing as by fire. Let us continue. And then verse 17, uh, when Jesus comes, uh, this is what, uh, what John said uh, when, he, when he was introducing Jesus' ministry in verse 17. Luke 3, 17. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his treasure floor and to gather the wheat, the wheat into his barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now this speaks of judgment. This speaks of judgment. And uh, if you are familiar with our Lord Jesus' life on earth, uh, his words really, his words really differentiate uh, what is right and what is wrong before God, what is true and what is false before God. And in a sense, that itself is judgment, isn't it? It is making a differentiation. For example, the Pharisees were highly regarded by the people. But Jesus knew what was in their heart and he, you know, he really scolded them, he scolded them the most. Yeah, he judged them actually. Yeah. So you find uh, what John the Baptizer speak about Jesus coming, you know, like we know him for, he's going to clear uh, those who belong to him and those who are not. So in fact, the Lord Jesus also used the example of judgment where, you know, the sheep will, on his, will be put on his right hand and the goat will be on the left. You know, he's making a differentiation. So Jesus coming as a judge, you know, he's ready to separate. He's ready to separate. And in his days on earth, he actually separated. So that people will know what is of God and what is not of God and even what is of the devil. So when Jesus comes again, you know, when he comes as a king, he is, you know, the execution of the judgment. Uh, will be carried out as well, isn't it? Yeah, the judgment. So we find uh, G John the Baptist's introduction of Jesus is relevant, you know, for the for the second advent of Christ, for the coming of Christ. It's amazing, isn't it? You look at it. And so the message is: be ready to meet Jesus. Yeah, that's what he's telling the people: be ready to meet Jesus. Yeah. But then he ended. You know, with this verse 18, I read verse 18, uh, chapter 3, verse 18. So with many other exhortations, he preached good news to the people. In other words, John the baptizer, he used many other exhortations. Uh, that means challenges, you know, uh, uh, very uh, uh, warning, words of warning, and some may be very sharp words. Yeah. And then he says he preached good news to the people. Uh, so, you know, being called, you know, he called uh, those who came, you know, the Pharisees, the tax collectors and others, 
uh, wipers, a group of wipers. Wipers are very poisonous snakes. Yeah. But these are the, the rich people, a lot of them are rich and, and so on. Scolding them. And then the conclusion here, uh, Luke says, this is the good news. He said, isn't that bad news always telling us what is wrong, what is wrong, what is wrong? That is what the world thinks, right? Always think positive, don't look at the negative. But brothers and sisters, what the Bible calls good news is this. It is to live in reality, to know the, you know, the, the foolishness, the evil of the human heart. Yeah, like join the Baptist, say, repent, you know, stop doing that. And then turn to Christ, believe in Christ. You see, that is the good news from God. It is not the human way of, okay, don't look at the bad thing, don't look at the bad thing. From God it is, like a surgeon, we must remove the bad thing so that the good can grow. And that is good news. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, in the midst of all these challenges that we are facing, of course including the, the coronavirus and the threats of war and all kinds of crazy things happening, there is so much bad news. But what it is really telling us is that there is something really wrong with the human race, something wrong with the earth. But the good news is Jesus will come again. He will make all things new. And even today, in our hearts, He can bring to us joy and peace and hope. And that really reminds us of Christmas season. You know, Christmas season brings us a sense of joy, hope, of goodness, receiving the gift, the free gift of God in the form of the baby Jesus. Of course, he, he, don't, he doesn't remain a baby all his life, but he grows up you know, and he deals with the evil, the foolishness, the sin of humankind effectively and bring the good news of the resurrection from the dead to those who repent. So it is good news. Yeah. So I hope and trust that you will join me in saying that, yes, John the Baptizer is relevant. Yeah, although he was the forerunner of Jesus before his public ministry, when Jesus reached about 30 years old, but as you think about him and we think about the coming of the Lord Jesus, it has so much yeah, to remind us, to warn us and to guide us. So in closing, uh, here are some thoughts. Of course, the first one is be ready to meet Jesus. Be ready to meet Jesus. I, I say this to you, I say this to myself. Am I ready to meet Jesus? Are you ready to meet Jesus? He will, you know, we won't, we won't see, we won't see uh, uh, advertise uh, in the TV or what. Are you ready to meet Jesus? No. But the Bible and through John the Baptizer this morning from the text in Luke chapter three verses seven to eighteen, yeah, we are reminded: be ready to meet Jesus. Are you ready? Number two, how to be ready? It is repentance. This is the ground rule. It is to stop doing what is displeasing to God. We cannot say that we are ready for Jesus when we continue to do what makes Jesus sad. We should make Jesus happy when He comes, you know, He will smile at you. Why? Because you are living in repentance. And brothers and sisters, no matter what age we are at, you know, no matter what age you are, what age you are today. Yeah, we are today. We are weak, you know, our hearts are so evil, you know, and we really, we really need God's grace to see our sin and to repent. Yeah, so there is no excuse for anyone. And the basic Getting ready to meet Jesus is to repent. So are there things in your life you need to turn away from today? May God have mercy on us. But then it doesn't stop at repentance. Jesus not only wants us to turn away from sin, but He wants us to follow Him, to be filled with the Spirit, and to live as children of God. You know, in other words, to think like Jesus, 
to act like Jesus, to be a blessing like Jesus. Yeah? To be filled with the Spirit and also be fire. In other words, Jesus and the Spirit of God will cleanse us. It's a whole process until Jesus comes in. So do not be surprised, as James, the Apostle James says, do not be surprised that you know, like many things are happening to you, or the Apostle Peter said, but know that this is a common experience, the experience of suffering for Christ. These are cleansing, really proving whether our hearts are truly for God or not. If we suffer because of Christ, not because we do evil, you know, it is it is the cleansing by fire. You know, because the world is not is un, the world is under the power of the evil one due to human sin. So those who do not walk in sin, you know, will be will be enemies of the devil, yeah, or uh, uh, there are spiritual attacks upon them. You know? But that is how God cleanses us. He wants us to be strong in the Lord Jesus. So brothers and sisters, let us be ready to meet Jesus through always living a life of repentance. You know, do not think that so much evil has happened, you have done so badly. Yeah, if you are aware of it, repent. God is always ready to help you, to listen to your prayer, to intervene on your behalf. As you humble yourself, as I humble myself before the Lord. And then, let the Spirit of God lead you, fill you, you know, and uh, follow the Lord Jesus. There will be cleansing, no doubt, but there will be great comfort, there will be great grace upon your life and mind until the Lord Jesus comes again. Praise the Lord. So brother, brothers and sisters, in closing, let us pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your word. Father, we thank you, Lord, for the Bible. We thank you for all the characters there. Father, we really thank you and appreciate, Lord, this treasure you have given to us. And this morning, we are so privileged to read the record of your servant, Dr. Liu, as he wrote about John the Baptizer. We find that his message is relevant for us even today. As he tell us to live in practical repentance, in loving our neighbors, in rejecting money as the controller in our lives, and in not abusing our influence for our selfishness. Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank you. May your word continue to cleanse us, speak to us. And especially as you think about the coming of our Lord Jesus, as you think about the comfort the Christmas atmosphere brings to us, we also remember that the Lord Jesus will come again. So help us, Father, to prepare for the coming of Lord Jesus through repentance, through seeking to be filled with your Holy Spirit every day and to overcome challenges allowing you to cleanse our lives, to be purer, to be closer to you, to walk with you, Father, to bring you glory, to be a blessing to others, and also to warn others, to bring others into your kingdom as well. Thank you, Father. We continue to commend the rest of this time to you. In our Lord Jesus' gracious name we pray. Amen. Let us affirm our faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we have come to you with our thanks for all the lovely things you have given us. Your love sees us through our daily lives. You give us food, good health, 
happiness and friendship with all those around us. Lord, we thank You for our Bishop and all the pastors that serve the Church. We pray You give them good health and protection in their journeys. Lord, we want to pray for the young Dipartwa Nagong and the government. We hope that the bad situation in the country will change and peace will be always around. Will change and peace will be with every family. That call on your name. We ask for your continued blessings on all students, both in schools and colleges. We pray that we will be able to go back to all our activities of the Church. Lord, bless the members of St. Paul's Slim River, members of the Agape community in Tanjumalim, and those who live in Rasa. May we be able to work together during the Christmas season when we welcome joyously into our homes. We pray for good health for Pastor Charles and for the deaconess and all the elders of the Church. May your love and joy be always with them. We want to remember the sick and the suffering to, Lord, touch them and heal them. We humbly ask all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Brothers and sisters, here are some announcements. Welcome to this morning's online service. When we have service or meeting in church, uh, this is the SOP that we follow. Uh, just a reminder, yeah, just a reminder. So, uh, especially now that we are having church services alternately. So for English congregation, the services for December uh, today is online, uh, 9 a.m. Uh, through YouTube, pre-recorded. And then next Sunday, we will meet in church at 9 a.m. Uh, we will, it will be a Holy Communion service as well. And then on the 25th, uh, Christmas Day itself, yeah, Saturday, uh, we will have the English congregation uh, Holy Communion Christmas service at 9 a.m. So note that on Sunday 26, there won't be any uh, service for the English congregation. So when we look at this, we will understand for Christmas services uh, for all the congregations here. Yeah? So on the 24th, Christmas Eve at 10 a.m., there will be the Tamil uh, service Holy Communion, all services for Christmas are Holy Communion. There will be the Tamil service and then at 8 p.m. Uh, in Agape, there will be the PM uh, Christmas service. And then on 25th, Christmas uh, morning itself, as mentioned earlier, at 9 a.m., we will have our English Holy Communion Christmas service. And then 8 p.m. at night, we will have the Chinese service, Christmas service in Lhasa. And then on Sunday, 26 at 10 a.m., we will have the uh, 
uh, Chinese service, yeah, Chinese service. Uh, do note that on 24th uh, Friday at uh, 1 p.m. we will also have uh, in Songkai, yeah, in the Songkai outreach, there will be a Chinese uh, and children uh, Christmas party, yeah. So just to uh, remind, uh, let you know, do pray, yeah, that the Lord will bless the people in Songkai. And Agape, uh, already we have started on-site service along with online uh, meetings for teaching or cell groups or fellowship. Praise the Lord. So for Agape, last Saturday, we already started the church service. So they will have church service every Saturday. So do pray for Deaconess Dorina as she travels to and fro. Yeah. So brothers and sisters, remember to care for others. Remember... Uh, today's message uh, practical loving our neighbors yeah so do be aware of any needy ones and you think that the you need the church help or they need help that you cannot give then do inform me or any pcc member and then uh, on behalf of the church uh, we will do something yeah the church will help uh, where whatever may be needed we'll do what we can yeah whether it is financial or prayer or visitation or things like that so do remember to stay safe and healthy all the time because the virus is still there and uh, we pray and hope that it will go away soon yeah but in the meantime let us continue to be careful so brothers and sisters in closing let us say the grace as a mutual blessing for one another may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and evermore. Amen. So brothers and sisters, go in peace and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.